Hi guys, I'm glad you're tuning in with me today. Hope you're having a fantastic day and you had a great weekend. In today's video, I want to talk to you about a new Ethereum 2.0 staking portal that is currently being developed called Launchpad. Afterwards, we will have a quick overview of the new Ethereum 2.0 0.12 spec as this is the closest version to the new final EVE 2.0 phase zero mainnet release. Last but not least, I want to look at the main reasons for the Ethereum 2.0 delay. And then I also take a close look at other competitors that are working on proof of state consensus mechanism. My name is Kieran. I create weekly DeFi and crypto video. This is where I ask you to subscribe because I make sure that you are ready for the next bull run. Fasten your seatbelt as it's going to be a wild ride. Also make sure that you hit that notification bell because if you do, I'll send you notifications as soon as new videos are out so that you don't miss any of the good stuff. A new Ethereum 2.0 staking portal is under development called Launchpad. The new web portal will allow validators to sign up to the Ethereum 2.0 network in a much easier way than the current way allows. At the moment, there are actually quite high barriers to entry for individuals wanting to become a validator on the Ethereum 2.0 Topaz testnet. If you're not technically savvy, it's going to be very difficult to install a validator and also make sure that you're not suffering penalties or get slashed by doing something bad on the network. The new Launchpad interface is gonna help new validators signing up, making sure that they understand the different aspects of staking, how to configure their hardware, and also secure their validator keys, as well as understanding what risks are involved with staking. There's a great quote I want to share with you by Andre Berlin, uh, product designer at Deepwork Studio, and he says, I quote, we needed to teach users a lot during the process of becoming a validator. We don't know how much background information people have and what they already know. Ideally, we want to avoid the chance of people making costly mistakes. At the current price of ETH, 32 ETH is around 7,000 US dollars, which is a hefty amount of money. A professional interface is crucial to make sure that a lot more validators enter the network in an easy way. It will also give these validators a lot more trust and confidence in the network. Furthermore, it's really important to get as many validators on board because the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain can only start if 524,288 ETH are collectively staked at the beginning. I want to share with you some screenshots of the new Launchpad interface courtesy of Jimmy Rego. I think it's great that he also offers on his Twitter post quite a lot of constructive feedback to improve the Launchpad proposal. A great thing about the Launchpad is it will help a lot of ETH holders that are undecided whether or not they want to become a validator to learn and understand the staking process and why it's important for the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. The Launchpad will also have a clear and simple validator staking rewards calculator, very similar to the Google Sheets one, but it will be in a much more professional way. Furthermore, there's a great timeline to show new validators what milestones are coming. There are no dates on the timelines for the milestones because the developers don't want to make any promises that they might not be able to uphold. But I think it still would be great to have like an estimation of when the next milestones will be achieved. There are also quite a lot of instructions that I think are very helpful. For example, there's an explanation on how you can perform the sign up process and why proof of stake is so important for the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. But when signing up, it wants new validators to understand that when they're adding their ETH to the deposit contract, it's a one way street and non reversible. What that means is that they won't be able to remove their ETH, their 32 ETH deposit for the next two years. What I noticed is that the Launchpad proposal is using the old testnet amount of 3.2 ETH instead of the new testnet amount, which is 32 ETH. So they have to update that to the new specs, which is 32 ETH. 
I think it's very good that the responsibilities on validators is covered. For example, if you make the mistake and install two validators with the same public key, they will be performing double votes and double attestations are a slashable event and you'll be removed as a validator. I think these instructions and the new launchpad is fantastic as it will help new validators understand the risks involved when deciding to become a validator on the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. The new Ethereum 2.0 specs 0.12 also known as quarantine haircut have been released and this is the closest version to the final specs of Ethereum 2.0 phase zero. So this is very exciting. There have been quite a few important changes, mainly to improve the beta testing of rewards and penalties. For example, there has been an inactivity penalty quotient adjustment to make sure that the inactivity intention is measured accurately. That means, as I understand it, if a validator is offline for only a short amount of time, then the penalty is going to be lower. There's also been a change to the max attestation slashings from one to two in order to help stress test the network in terms of slashings. I won't go through all the changes as it would make this video probably really boring for a lot of people, so I'll link the specs down below and you can read them at your leisure. Now let's talk about the Ethereum 2.0 delays and also have a look at what other competitors are in the space. Now I want to put this out there. I'm definitely not an Ethereum maximalist. I really don't like maximalists. I'm open to many different projects, many different technologies as long as they can perform. So one of the biggest reasons for the delay of Ethereum 2.0 is constant bug fixing, which is of course very important to make sure that the launch goes flawlessly. But finding and fixing this bus is an arduous task that is definitely not easy to do. Furthermore, many teams are working on developing fuzzing input techniques, which will allow random data to be input into different validator clients in order to find bug out layers and fix them. But this is very, very difficult to do and can take months. Another big reason for the delay is because there are many teams working on clients and these clients are super important for storing the beacon nodes and validating blocks. Currently, there are seven different client implementations for EVE 2.0 and these are Cortex, Nethermind, the Ethereum Foundation with Trinity, Chainsafe with Lodestar, Prismatic Labs with Prism, Sigma Prime with Lighthouse, Status with Nimbus, and Teku with Pegasus. Because of this multi-client paradigm, it's really difficult to synchronize all these clients together to work on the Schlesi testnet. And yeah, that can cause delays as many different decentralized teams means that human resources are important. Two clients are working currently on the Schlesi multi-client network Lighthouse from Sigma Prime and Prismatic Labs with Prism. To ensure that the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain launches correctly without any hiccups, it's very important that the Schlesi multi-client testnet runs for at least two months without any bugs. What I really like about the Ethereum 2.0 development teams is that they do not want to compromise the security of the project by having a faster launch date. So in my opinion, I prefer the teams make sure that all the bugs are ironed out and postpone the launch date than they just launch it right now and have some hiccups cause many people to lose a lot of money. So while Ethereum is fixing bugs and working on the multi-client testnet, the competitors are working on their own proof of stake consensus to be able to hopefully get a slice of the Ethereum market share. There are several competitors that I've got my eyes upon and they're getting close to the finish line. The competitors are Tezos, Algorand, Cotum and Harmony. Tezos is running a proof of stake program under the liquid proof of stake algorithm, proof of stake and delegated proof of stake called DPoS. 
Algorand is using the pure proof of stake mechanism, which uses a secret self-selection system to choose randomly selected committees of stakeholders for validating blocks. Kurtum also runs on a pure proof of stake consensus and anyone with Kurtum tokens can become a validator and compete for rewards. Harmony Project recently launched its staking, thus becoming the first sharded proof of stake blockchain that managed to implement two technologies simultaneously. Harmony's mainnet supports hundreds of nodes in multiple shards, producing blocks in a few seconds with instant finality. Even though there are many competitors in the space developing rapidly emerging proof of stake technology, in my opinion, Ethereum is still the pioneer and the main contributor for sharding and staking. In my opinion, 2020, 2021 are going to be extremely important years in terms of proof of stake, technology, sharding and scalability. So I'd be lying if I wouldn't say I was super excited about all of that. And I hope you are also excited about these new technologies. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. At the end of the week, I'll gather the most interesting comments and I'll answer them in a video. So with that said, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one. See you soon. Bye-bye.